Knowledge is power. Make an impact by learning more or hire us to do it for you. Let us focus on what we do best so you can stay focused on what you do best. Find all of our options under services, one-to-one training, subscription-based training, or accounting and business consulting. All right. Hey, guess what? I have good news, everyone. You ready for it? We are live. Welcome to the Friday Zoom with Dan, David and Friends. It's 8.05. We managed to do it. It took five minutes to get there, but we got there. And now we're live on Facebook with none other than David Leary. Hello, everybody. And a whole Happy lot of years. other people who obviously came for David, don't care a lick about me, and I'm, okay, I'm not offended at all. Um, David, as most of us know, worked for Intuit for about 100 years. Yes, he's a vampire. And now he's moved on to auto entry and his own consulting firm. So, David, hi, welcome. It's been a while. It's been a while. And then the interesting thing is, so the last four or five years of Intuit, I was running my own, well, it was a Google Hangout, then it became a Zoom, right? It has evolved because Google Hangouts, you know, kind of went away. But you and I both did ours at the exact same time. So like, we were kind of fighting over audience a little bit, like uh, 9 a.m. That's why. Friday. And so this is the first time I've watched yours or interacted with it because I was always running my own similar type of event. But it was for developers, right? But you had been on mine maybe before you started yours. I think I was on – yes, I, I – I don't know if it was this. I was on some one of your properties. It might have been the Zoom in. But. I, I think it was this one. Because I'm, I'm sure I've had you on talking about like QuickBooks Connect and the app Showdown and those kinds of things. Yeah. Maybe, maybe we recorded it. Because I didn't want to have to. I'm not maybe. sure. I don't know. Anyway, yeah. you're here now and that's what counts. Yeah. Happy to be here now. It's, it's awesome to see like the turnout. Everybody's got their webcams on. Um, is it this busy every week? Is it- uh, yes. No, David. You are very <laughs> special. But I, I will say this. Um, recently more than in the past i've been making more of an effort to email everybody and remind them about you know the zoom that was coming up and so i think sending the emails out helps but you and i also did a lot of promotion on social media the last couple of days and i know that helped because as soon as you and i started posting we had a whole bunch of people start registering so and because what we have here live is not even all of who registered and then plus you're going to have the, anybody in the Facebook world that are watching live. Are, is this also on YouTube live at the same time? No, uh, Zoom webinar only lets you go on Facebook or YouTube. So I use Facebook. Oh, it's either or now? Okay. Yeah. Well, that's always been the case. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, you can only do one or the other. Like if I try to go live now, I can only stop the live stream now that I've gone live on Facebook. I don't have a choice to also go live on YouTube. Um, and the reason I chose Facebook, because some people ask me this, Instead of YouTube, yes, YouTube has more people, but Facebook, in my opinion, at least from my own perspective, is a much more targeted audience. There are more people that I'm connected to on Facebook that know me and care about me, as opposed to the average Joe or Mary on YouTube who doesn't care about me at all, right? So I felt that Facebook was the better place to go with this for that reason. That makes sense. And Larry DeForest is live on Facebook. He just commented. And you know what? I forgot a spoon. So talk amongst yourselves. I'll be right back. <laughs> okay. So, so well, that's gone. We can kind of take a vote. I, I think there's a – I don't have like a slide deck to go through, right? Um, but we could informally talk about, in, uh, talk about auto entry and then if we want. I mean, there's so many people here. Like it may kind of feel like a free-for-all, but also I feel like one of you probably is going to ask a question that 20 other people have in this room. And so we could just kind of go more q and A. I kind of give a brief overview of auto entry and then we could do q and A. I don't know how much you guys want demo, demo, demo versus just uh, getting your questions answered. Um, we could just kind of balance it between the three. So what are you guys leaning towards? Uh, Jennifer, I'm looking at the chat to see if people are answering there. Um, so Mariette says that you and I, David, are just the best combination, and that's why all these people are here. It's because of the combination of you and me specifically. But it's always uh, Seth, David. Now you have me trying to picture Seth, what David. our baby would look like. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a week. I can have that for you. And then Jennifer Baldick says she's never heard of this. Jennifer, I've been doing this for 100 years. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm shocked. <laughs> um, so uh, everybody says so they're I good with questions. What? Hey, Seth, so I guess I'm just not quite old enough to know about this event. It started I, I before not. my time. 
Um, yeah, David, and David, I think that's probably a good idea, especially given the large number of people that we have with us, uh, and I have two more to let in now, and we do have the live Facebook feed, which I actually need to bring up on my screen once again. I'm going to make some notes that are over here, so kind of uh, intros, I'll kind of give an overview. Um, you guys want to see a preview of something that's coming. Oh, yes, expenses, expense reports. Expenses. Um, chat's going a little bit fast here. Sorry. Do, do, do the demo. Quick demo. So yes, we'll pop into the demo. Okay. Carmen says hi from Florida. Gina Rodkey says hello, and Rowena says good morning, everyone. So I've got the live Facebook feed. I've got the feed also shared in the group. So uh, I'm going to keep an eye on things here, David. And uh, I'll try to help answer questions too as best I know answers for. Okay. All right. Yeah. And it might be easier, like. Uh, uh, just my experience with Zoom is use the chat for all the chatting stuff, like the weather, audio is messed up, things like that. But use the Q&A panel to ask questions if you don't want to yell it out or just that way I won't lose track of the questions and I can mark them answered as we uh, go along as well. Does that make That's sense? That's a good idea. Yep. The Q&A is a much better way to keep track of questions. And I have it open so I can see it. And I think I have everything else closed. I, I think we're... We're so Nafsan is saying she'd like to see a comparison between similar apps. So if you can talk about other apps that might be compared to auto entry, make a note about that. And then we have a partner program, so I'll talk about that, I guess. Other apps. And Peter Cohen essentially asked the same thing that, you know, how you guys compare to others. And now I need a pen that works. That's no, dead. Um, hello, apps, Evernote, yeah. OneNote, Notepad. <laughs> You gotta be, you gotta be old school sometimes, sir. Uh, people said they aren't allowed to add questions. That might be a. Uh, oh no, they setting. should be. Everybody here is a panelist now. So it even says allow anonymous questions. Oh, here, wait. I just changed some settings. See if you can ask questions now. Mine isn't allowing me to do it. It should, because I just changed it. It says allow anonymous questions, uh, allow attendees to view all questions. Attendees can upvote, attendees can comment. You know what, I wonder and if- you're all panelists, so you should definitely all be able to answer, to ask questions. Mariette, type in. In the, in the chat we can, the chat we can, but when you click on the Q&A at the bottom, now it's there. Okay, yeah. perfect, okay. We have, we have a system now. Perfect. Yeah, all panelists by default should be able to ask questions for sure. Attendees, I have to give special permissions for. So anyway, we should be good to go. So David, perfect. Hi. Hello, everybody. Can I close that? So uh, I'm David Leary. Um, as Seth kind of loosely introduced, a lot of you already know who I am. Uh, I was re I was with Intuit almost 22 years. So maybe less than 100 days ago was my last day at Intuit. I am now uh, have my own company, which we'll actually see a little bit when I open up my, my, my QuickBooks to show things if, if that's necessary. Um, and then uh, I also do a podcast, uh, the Cloud Accounting Podcast with Blake Oliver. And I'm also now with Auto Entry. And so that's the main reason everybody's here today is to talk about Auto Entry. So how many of you just maybe a show of hands have heard of Auto Entry? How many of you seen Auto Entry? How many of you currently use auto entry? Okay, good, good, good. So there's some, some parts of it possibly, got it. So I, I think the best way to think about auto entry, it's, uh, it's for automatically doing data entry. So anything you're gonna sit down and type into QuickBooks or Xero or Sage or, any, or your accounting system, right? Anything you have to manually type in, it's going to put that in for you, right? And it's, it's OCR. Right, so you know, take a receipt, pull the data off the receipt, shove it in. Right, but it's for anywhere you're at in your client engagement, and that's what's interesting about auto entry. So if you think about your like your client engagement, I don't know how many of, how many of you actually quick through it. How many of you are bookkeepers, and how many of you are accountants that do tax work, as well? So accountants. Okay, so it's about all right, a little bit of a mix. All right, so. A lot of times you're going to get those once a year engagements, right? People show up once a year just with their bank statements and all they want from you is a tax return. 
right? And so you're gonna scan those bank statements and you're gonna be inside of auto entry, be able to uh, quick code those. Inside of auto entry, you can pump out your um, trial balance, do your adjusting journal entries, pump out your profit and loss, your balance sheet, and you can shove that into your tax software. So you're bypassing, you're, you're exporting it for your tax software. So, so any of those once a year client engagements that are just one-offs that you're not gonna take the time to shove that data into an accounting system because you just wanna pump out that tax return. So you can use auto entry for those once year engagements. Well, once you have those in, you've scanned the bank statements, you obviously wanna move those clients right into a, uh, a monthly engagement. You wanna get them onto an accounting system and, and get a, bookkeeping, a monthly bookkeeping engagement, right? So now you're gonna be able to scan in um, all their bills. You're gonna be able to scan in their supplier statements to reconcile against those bills. You're gonna be able to scan in any of the receipts. Right? You're gonna be able to scan in uh, sometimes you get these people as they come on board and you're onboarding them, they've been creating their invoices in Microsoft Word or Microsoft Excel and they just have printouts of their invoices. They don't actually have them in a system anywhere. You can take those, that, so, so, so the sales invoices and the sales receipts, you can scan those and, and use auto entry to get those into the accounting system. So now you're taking all that data, getting in the accounting system, right? It's all been OCR'd and the bank statements. And now you have the client in the accounting system. So then now you're kind of that monthly engagement, right? So now you just have that happening every month, but eventually you don't want to do paper anymore, right? So this is where you set up your inboxes. So there's an email address for your accounts payable, an email, email address for um, expense reports, email address for the sales, right? And so you have the in-bank statement. So you have these inboxes and you just have these, you just forward those emails that come in. And so those get forwarded in, you just open up auto entry and you can quickly code things. There's also rules and you can apply those rules and it, you know, it's learning as it's going along based on that client. Well, then you wanna to get to that ultimate step, which is you wanna be efficient with that client, right? Because every minute you're spending time uh, coding, right? And categorizing things, that's just time you could be using doing something else for your client. So that's where you take that next step and get them to that automated level where you're auto publishing things. So the ideal situation is you never touch auto entry, right? Uh, transactions go into auto entry, auto entry shoves into the accounting system and you never touch it or look at it. But by the way, quick you're break. That client engagement, right? From the one-off to I have everybody auto publishing, auto entry is gonna help you automate those processes. Does that make sense? Yeah, real quick. So yeah. I, I think what's happening, by the way, with the Q&A is as panelists, we don't ask questions. Questions are supposed to be reserved for the attendees. So oh, that's right. why we can't use the Q&A. It's meant that attendees can ask questions and us as the panelists, as our group, would be answering them. So that's why. So just use the chat and okay. we'll monitor the chat and ask questions. And there are already a couple of questions in the chat. So Marietta is asking, David, so are you saying for a tax accountant example, you never use QBO? Well, you can, right? But there's a lot of tax accountants that the only thing they provide that client once a year is a tax return. So, if, right. So if somebody sends them a P&L and a balance sheet and they use that to compile a tax return. Yeah. Or they just send them their bank statements. Right. And then you need to somehow create a P&L and a balance sheet. Right? And there's lots of ways you could do that. You could pay some of your staff to type every transaction in the bank statement into Excel you could try to capture it other ways, but you can use auto entry to do that for you. Get those bank statements into a trial balance, into your P&L and balance sheet, export to tax software. Yeah. So, so regardless where you're at in the engagement with the client, from one-offs where they only give you the bank statements, once a year engagements to monthly bookkeeping client where I have everything auto publishing and everything in between. That makes sense. Okay, and Aaron's wondering, uh, you mentioned vendor statements can go in to reconcile against invoices received. So auto entry can help or just be the inbox for the receipt of the statement? So it, it can help. And the way it helps is it, it'll reconcile it. So let's say you're a restaurant and that restaurant's getting a bill or an invoice every day from that delivery truck, right? And then hopefully they've either are scanning those in and they're uploading to auto entry or they're forwarding the emails in. But and I think Kristen could uh, speak to this because she, I know she has a lot of restaurant clients. Sometimes those get beans spilled on them. Sometimes they wind up on the floor of the, the walk-in refrigerator. Not all those invoices or those bills probably make it into the system. But then you probably get a statement once a month emailed to you. So you can bring in that statement. Auto Entry will take that statement and reconcile it against all the bills that came in that month. And then if anything's missing, you could go find the paper statement Upload, I'm sorry, the paper bill, upload it, or auto entry can create it 
for you based on the line items that are on the statement and kind of work backwards. So that way you're able to reconcile all your bills that come in from one vendor to that statement. And I think the restaurant use case is really a, a good example of that. Hey, David, would you be able to um, share your screen and kind of show us some of that stuff in auto-entry? Because it sounds great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, let me do this. I'm going to flip over to this, uh, the kind of the tax use case, the accountant's prep tool. So I know somebody was wondering about like kind of what's next. And so this is something that's next. Um, so I'll show the accountant's prep tool and then we'll go from there. So give me a- David, this is Marriott. I just wanted to make sure I understand. So yeah. um, if you, with that example of the tax prep, which is huge for so many preparers out there, I just want to make sure, are you basically saying that we get the data, we recreate the accounting and auto entry, and then we push that into our tax software so we never use another accounting software? Is that correct? Correct. So, okay. I mean- it, it's for those relationships with clients that you don't do bookkeeping for. Right, right, exactly. Right? Yeah, yeah. So, so why, That's why, why, why take time to shove that into an accounting system that you're never going to look at again? Right, so, so you here's, just, here's, here's a quick follow-up. Here's a quick follow-up. Can you reconcile then? Because that's something important, whether or not I do bookkeeping that I reconcile, and then that's how we push out the trial balance? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, so let me go over so to- So it creates its own general ledger. It's got its own database and it's compiling. Yeah, anyway, let me um, go over that one second here. Share my screen. That's pretty awesome, but I definitely want to see it. I know tax repairers would love this because they're doing it in Excel. Share, so. share screen two. All right, so I think you guys are seeing my screen here. Yes, we can see. Okay, and so this is a, uh, this, this is not uh, not out yet, and so this is just a test version of, um, or QA version of auto entry. And so I don't have any data in here but the bank statements just to show the accountant's prep. So I'm just gonna click into there. And is this big enough? Do I need to zoom in more? Is it looks okay? very good and clear to me. Okay, so for the accountant's prep tool, right? They, they were talking about this once a year, you know, one-time engagement, right? I won't dig into the bank statements and the uploading and the scanning of bank statements right now, but I'll just really get into that accountant's prep tool and kind of preview that a little bit. And oh, I got to make some of the video go out of the way. It's a little, I'm making too much space on my screen here. There we go, that's a little bit better. I can see. Perfect. Okay, so this, this one happens to have some previous years. Maybe that client, I have their last year's return I did in the year before, right? So there's some data in here. But you can actually take the, the statements and you can quick code these statements after they come in. So. And so it's very, like, it's really like a spreadsheet, right? So when you're, um, there's, there's certain lines that haven't been coded yet. So I'm gonna get into on those. And so I can be like, oh, these two Costco ones and I can quick code these in to um, the account that I want or the tax line basically. So maybe that's really what I'm doing, right? So I'm just going straight to the tax lines. So anybody want to help? What, what should Costco go to? Office expenses, I guess. Let's, uh, sure. That works, got it. And so because I checked mark both, right? I can code both. So really you can really quick code all of these really fast. So you can have um, some of your staff come in and just rattle through all these. Then once everything's coded up, that's where you can uh, start working on your- uh, This has a very zero like look and feel. <laughs> so I can't speak to that. I think um, this is something that used to. So a little history on um, auto entry. So auto entry used to be called, uh, well, legally, yes, it's still called OCRX, right? And so they came out of Dublin, Ireland, and in, in the UK. And so this was kind of the original tool that was created, but it was a desktop package. So this still exists as OCREX. So this is an original desktop tool that's now been moved, uh, migrated to cloud and that's gonna be part of auto entry now. Sarah says she wants a memo field. Is there a way to put a memo? The reference looks like it's for the number. That I don't. I assume that's the details, but just uh, con condensed, right? Are they, are they extracting the pay somehow from the details? The, the payee is coming, yeah, the payee is coming from the, the, the details. Uh, but if I see if it's check, right, it's just going to probably just say check. I don't know if there's any of those on this statement or not. Well, um, there's some with what appears to be check numbers, and it has the payee, like Verizon, check 1843. Yeah. 
Well, and all the way to the right, what does that rightmost button do on the line? The one next to that. That's transferring it. That I don't know. Oh, so um, let's say it was uh, if it was tra transfer from one bank account to another. But there, so that was the arrow. But there's another little okay button next it's to standard that standard here. Yeah. So let's see. Got it. Um, I just thought maybe uh, so you can add lines, you can split it. Okay. Yeah, split it out. So great feature. Yeah, memo's interesting because it's like do you. Like a lot of times a memo makes sense, right? Like if I buy lunch today and my accountant needs to know some, some information about that a year from uh, down, 10 months down the road when they're doing my taxes, the memo, but this is really, your, it's just the bank statement data. Well, Sarah makes a point like for meals, you need to write down who and why. Who attended, yep, yep. Although and so that's less and less relevant with the new tax law because I don't think you can really deduct those so much anymore. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. So. So you scan your bank statements, you can quick code them, right? So this is that, that use case, you've quick coded them. Once you've quick coded them, you can go ahead and pump out your uh, trial balance. Uh, once you the page. And so this is, it's all to your okay, tax I'm, lines, I'm being right? corrected. Meals are still deductible. It's just entertainment that's not. Got it. So you have your trial balance, you can do your uh, just in journal entries inside. So you can add a journal entry for any adjustments you need to make. And then when you're ready, you can uh, ex pump out your uh, balance sheet, your profit and loss, and you can export your data out. And so right now, um, again, like I said, this was originally rolled out in the UK. It was the desktop product. So there's you know, exports out to Sage, CCH, Iris, but as we come to the US market, obviously we're gonna to wanna to do pro series, et cetera, et cetera, going forward. So this, that's kind of that, that, that engagement rate. Does it make a little bit more sense now? Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, go ahead. Go for it, Marriott. I was just saying, yeah, you're the tax professional. No, yeah, well, I was just kind of understanding, um, and, and I'm just gonna kind of say it out there. So we, I kind of do this already where, I would go ahead and get those PDFs, put them into, um, you know, let's say I use Hector's tool, get them where I can upload them to QBO, and then I can recreate the accounting all in a matter of a couple hours, and then I can push it over to my tax software. So the big thing here is the pushing to the tax software, but in QBO, of course, I have the trial balance tool that allows me to do that. So why would I use this over my process already? Um. You don't have, if, if you're only running, so if you're only, if you're not having a bookkeeping engagement with that client, right? So are you just subscribing them to QB, to the QBO once a year? You just start subscribe for that month and then stopping the subscription? Are you paying for every month? Like, yeah, well, basically, I mean, I don't really don't, I mean, if they're my tax client at the very minimum, I need to do estimated taxes. So I'm touching them quarterly and then eventually they do become monthly engagements. But even if they're just like quarterly engagements because I have to estimate taxes, it still makes more sense to put them on QBO. Um, and so I guess I'm trying to figure out when I would use this over what I'm I mean, doing already. I mean, if you were, if you're, I mean, obviously auto entry pushes to the accounting software, right? So in your case, you're just gonna not use this feature, right? You're just gonna be able to take advantage of the bank statement scans, right? Onboarding your clients, shoving the data into an accounting system. You won't use the accounts prep tool. But there's thousands and thousands of accountants that don't do bookkeeping, and they're just all they want to do is pump out that client's tax return. Okay. I, have a, I have a question. We come in. Yeah. I have a question along the same lines. I mean, it seems to me if you're doing business clients, you wouldn't want to be doing using this because it seems like a lot of extra work. And for, I'm not sure what the market's going to be for people that are like just 1040 clients. It seems like a lot of work for you know, that kind of client. I'm just wondering what the market for this is, this particular aspect. I'm not, I mean, just, I'm just talking about the account. Like as far as business return, how many business returns are done? No, I'm saying that in terms of who you're appealing to as an, the accounting community, if you're a business client, I wouldn't even have a business client that has like, you know, I have to scan in their bank statements, try to create financial statements to do a tax return. And for 1040 clients, a lot of those people with simple returns, especially now with the tax law, I think they're just going to HR and block it themselves. So I'm just kind of wondering who the market is 
in the accounting community who the market is for this particular functionality. Uh, I think he said it's people who only do taxes, don't deal with bookkeeping, and uh, unless I missed something. Well, I was going to say, Dennis, um, this was perfect if I had this for a client that didn't pick a software, needed to get 2014, 2015, 2016, all forward done, mm -hmm. and this would have been the most ideal thing for me to use. I had to do a couple workarounds to make it work, but um, I can see what Mariette's saying, like to continue on, but just on the bookkeeping side, this would have been perfect to produce this rather mm -hmm. than a ton of spreadsheets and like, here you go, and you have to figure it out that way. Mm -hmm. So it's just a nice, to me, I find it as a nicer product for someone who hasn't really ventured into saying, I'm going to use a desktop, I'm going to use online, whatever financial program, but I still need to get all this back work done. And I could so see it for, like. if you're doing back tax return, where there's no records that might be yeah. an application for it. And, yeah. and really tax houses, right? Anybody who's just like, hey, we pump out, we're just, you know, they're, they're yes, you could, it, it, there's HR blocks, right? But there's tons of people that are just like an HR block. They just pump out returns every year. Hey, David, I think part of it is the, like the fundamental uh, core features of auto entry are so powerful that when you, when we demonstrate those and show how you can gain, pull the information in, you're building it all together that this then becomes a way to have kind of a full complete solution. So if you have to scan the documents, you have to capture that information. You could be doing it through auto entry anyways, instead of having to, link this to another thing and so forth. And um, exactly, yeah. It, 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 you can use one tool, auto entry, regardless of how you engage with your client, right? If all you do is a tax return and you wanna pump that out because they're just based, they don't use any accounting software at all, they're just giving you bank statements, you can do that. If you've got them as a accounting client and you automate and auto publish everything, you can use auto entry for that. And then all the client, you know, that, that relationship in between those those stuff. Could you show us some of the document capture features of auto entry that are? Yeah, let me let me uh before we jump out of accountants prep, like, does anybody else have any questions on the, the accountants prep? Tax? I was I was just going to make one point, David. If um if you may, you know, this is also perfect. I do a lot of bookkeeping and don't do taxes, but I have a lot of CPA that call me. Oh, we have this client who has back work, and we need to just get a trial balance. You get that for me. And this is a perfect solution because I don't have to give them QBO. I don't have to give them zero. I don't have to give them anything, but I can scan 12 months of documents in easy code and come out probably within an hour and a half um, after it's been processed, a trial balance that I can ship right over to the CPA and we're done. And it's a very, uh, I like it because I'm, I'm charged based on use. I'm not charged based monthly on that client. Yeah, and, and that's a, yeah, another use case. It's, it's, it's when all you want is a balance sheet and you don't need an accounting system, this is a way to do it. I mean, you, you can scan these, export them to Excel, right, um, through some other software package, right? And then once you have all that data in Excel, you create your uh, pivot tables and you create your own balance sheet. You can do this work. It's just, you can do it all. It's just automated here, right? It's just easier to do and quicker to do. So yeah, so that, that's basically the account prep tool. This is coming soon. I have a question. Yeah. So can we put in our own chart of accounts? Or is this, because in Canada, our chart of accounts is different. So can we import our own? I'm, I'm gonna say yes, you can import your own. Okay. Yep. And then is there a way to, if we have vendors that we can actually assign a rule so that we don't have to go in and grab like 20 Costco's at once, we can just say Costco is always office supplies. I, Shell is always fuel. So at this point, accounts prep does not have those rules that the rest of auto entry has, but it's the natural flow. Like, the, yes, we want to do that. that. That makes sense. It's totally logical to do that. We already have those rules, but, but that, that would be the ideal situation. You scan in like Jan's mm -hmm. example, right? She scans in a year of bank statements. We already yeah. know what Starbucks should be put at. And so imagine you had a year of bank statements and as soon as you open this up, Starbucks is already categorized, right? The Verizon bill is already categorized. So maybe there's only a small set of exceptions that you now have to manually code, right? So is that, you're saying going to grab it, is that something we can actually put in as a set of rules and generically put it across a number of companies? Or are you saying it's just not available yet? It's not but available it in the part. accounts prep tool. Okay. That is available in auto entry. Like, and we'll, we'll kind of get into some of that stuff, but, but as far as for the, this, um, the 
kind of bake state think bake statements to a trial balance not yet right so it's just a, a matter of it's kind of like two two ships are coming together right so you have auto entry right and the data to the county systems and then you have what was like i said before was a auto entry's original product ocrx which was a desktop product which that functionality is now in here and that desktop product didn't have any of those rules or any of that so now you have so you kind of have that train coming in this way and you have auto entry this way and so yeah as that functionality from auto entry is going to start coming down to this as this is now being added to auto entry but yeah the, i, I so that's going to make this even faster right from a coding standpoint if you have those rules um, and then on top of that, the, it would work the other way. You could set up those rules and then maybe that client becomes a monthly engagement and now those rules move that direction to auto entry as well. So all right, I'm going to, just for time's sake, close out of here out of the accounts prep. Yeah, let's jump over to the main prompt. Yeah. And so Nancy's asking, how is this different than other write-up programs like CCH, Accounting Suite, CYMA, Client Write-up, Thompson Reuters Write-up? And uh, I think the main reason the way it's different is now if that customer becomes a monthly engagement, you ha you're not going to take that data as CCH and shove that into an accounting system. But with auto entry, you could. Yeah. Right. Okay. The data's here. So, so you, it, it grows with the engagement. All right. She says, got it. Thank you. And Perfect. I think it's a, an accent to those products, not so much a replacement. So the, the, those write-up programs probably haven't caught up with all the scanning and, and OCR and pushing technology and those those writer programs too are uh yeah they're not they're not doing any ocr my understanding at this point they're not doing um they're not set up very efficient for like even the data entry <laughs> right if that if that makes sense um so they're 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 there and they're they're really good at their half of this which is the creating the tax return but that middleman work that kind of has to happen and to get ready to to, to prepare that trial balance is really the thing they don't do really well. They kind of really push it towards build it in Excel and just bring in the trial balance, right? They don't want to be line item coding or they're kind of not in that business. Got it. All right. So let me go back to the home screen. So this is a uh, auto entry and I'm going to actually go back one layer higher. To what companies? So I'm not an accountant or bookkeeper, so I do not have an accounting firm, right? So I only have my company here, but you would see all of your clients here. And the nice thing about auto entry, which I've always like thought is kind of a genius idea is the way the pricing model works. So how many of you guys use Audible books? All right, so you know like an Audible, every month Audible charges me $14.99 or $12.99, or where do they charge me every month? I don't even pay attention at this point for a book. What you get, you get a token to download an audiobook. Well, there's plenty of months. I do not download an audiobook, but eventually I know I'm going to take a road trip in the car and I'm going to go and download four audiobooks. And I have all those tokens sitting there ready to go and I can use them. But if I would have um, just lost my token every month, I probably would have canceled my subscription to audible a long time ago. Right. But it's that it's so it's a token model, and that's what auto entry uses. So instead of having to make a decision like, oh, auto entry is worth it for this client and worth it for client B and worth it for client J, you just have a bucket of tokens. You 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 add all your clients to auto entry. So maybe one client you don't hear from for two months, and they show up with a bunch of uh, a stack of paper bills one day, and then you use some of those tokens on them. And then maybe there's other ones that are. Um, Maybe they're, they have seasonal business, right? And so you don't want to you don't pay us for a subscription if they only really need it three months of the year because they're they're a water park or something, right? A swimming pool. And so you you with that having that 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 bucket of tokens for all your clients, it allows you to take advantage of this regardless of your volume level with the client. Instead of like there's I mean you've seen this, right? There's other products and I, I think build.com's a really easy example of this, right? Where I see this a lot with pro advisors. They look at bill.com and like, okay, it makes sense to put these six clients on bill.com, but not my other 45 clients because individually it's just too expensive for that client, specific client. So with this, you don't have to make the decision. You just put all your clients on it and you utilize it based on the volume, right? So, so it's token based. And the way the tokens work 
um, it's kind of a three token system. So one token for receipts and uh, bills and invoices. If you need line items as well, it's gonna be two tokens. And then bake statements are three tokens page. And so that's how it decrements your, uh, your bucket of tokens. And so let me flip over to show you um, in my company here. So this is uh, my company and I'm gonna drill down and I'm gonna go into my um, tokens just to, whoops, I gotta move the video out of the way here. Let me slide that to the left. All right, so let's go into my tokens. Here we go. And I clicked, there it goes, okay. So that's, that's my payment usage, here we go. Sorry, I went to the wrong thing. So you can see, you can see my usage credits here, right? So I, uh, on December 4th, I had two invoices and one expense receipt, right? And so I used two credits there and one credit here. So regardless of all your clients would show up and you'd be able to just, it's based on your usage. And the nice thing is your credits roll over. So I think I'm on like 50 credit a month plan for this company and I don't use them all and they roll over for three months. So I have those, those credits just build up and I can continue to use them. So before we jump off of the pricing and the way that credits work, do anybody have any questions on that model? Do the credits when you just showed that uh, give a breakdown of which clients were that was posted to or used on? I've, I'm 99% sure yes. I just don't think I can show it. I think it just goes off my main account. Well, you wouldn't be able to because you only have one company here. Yeah, I only have one company. I'm 99% I'm sure it does. I uh, think it does. I've used it for three different ones, and I feel like I know where I'm at. When I spoke to your person at QuickBooks Connect, she told me because you can yeah. <clears throat> sort of see and allocate the credits so that, like you said, as you need more for one and less for another, you, you, know, you don't have to worry about losing them. It's like rollover. Yeah. When you can bulk purchase too, if you need. Yeah. I mean, all your clients are just a, uh, yeah, a bucket for all, use across all your clients. So in the chat, Aaron says it does, it shows you all clients and usage per client. Okay. Got it. So I just don't have, because I don't have, yeah, that's set up. You can't see that here. Got it. Cool. So let me go back to the dashboard. Oh, and also Aaron had a question before. He says, you keep saying OCRs. We know this is effectively an old technology as various docu uh, varieties of documents are presented. It relays on predefined structures. Is auto entry investing in machine vision and machine learning to enhance the data extraction model? Yeah, so uh, auto entry is a combination of machine learning, AI, you know, software and technology stack with human verification. So it is a combination. So this is why um, the from a demo perspective, it's kind of a hassle, right? If I, if I take a photo of something right now and upload it to auto entry, it takes a little while, right? Because it's going to be human verified. I know that some people, um, I think Jan brought this up to me before, like, hey, basically it's kind of take a while, but it's, yes, they're not done instantaneously, but when they are done, you can trust that they're accurate, right? And so it's that, that fine line of, uh, do you really need something instant? done or do you need something done correctly so when you're ready to go in and do the books back for that client all the data is correct right? where are your humans um the humans are there is a uh, office in india and i think we have a second one i can get an answer on that though let me make a note and then reply back on the facebook Let's see. they're Actually, in a little box and under david's desk under david's desk yes let's see so I can find out the other locations there. Can I scan directly into auto entry? If I have a stack of stuff, can I just, or do I have to save it and then upload it? Um, you have to save and upload. So you can, so wherever on your hard drive, you might have your documents. Mm -hmm. um, Ooh, if you can get um, Fujitsu ScanSnap to include auto entry as one of the cloud apps. That would oh, I know. Yeah. yeah, so. So neat just is in beta, but they're, they're doing it. Yeah. And so, which I know and I've used that for uh can't snap on my phone like that to upload things directly. So you can, um, the, the easy workaround that is you just scan to an email 
right? And so you set up the Fujitsu scanner or your Xerox copy machine in the office, your, your multifunction scanner. You can just set that up to your inbox for your accounts payable department. Well, I, I say it account, like, I don't really have an accounts payable department. I have an email address for my accounts payable department and it sends it to auto entry. So, but yeah, you can just, um, that's the easiest workaround for that. But yeah, I, I totally agree. It'd be nice if you just had Snapchat cloud, right? Or any of those services like that to just automate or, that in. Or scan to Google Drive. And then, so, you know, you have a designated Google Drive folder for ScanSnap, then create a, an auto entry folder, and then use Zapier to say whenever something's added to this auto entry folder, send it into auto entry. Or are you guys not in Zapier? We're not in Zapier. And it's interesting because oh. I, I, I've talked, like, I've kind of leaned towards, yes, you want to we should have a Zapier integration, but I actually uh, had a deep, I, I chatted with Heather Slatterly a lot about it. And like, we're just kind of going through use cases and like, you start going down these paths of what you would build, what you would build, what you would build. And sometimes like the, it's nice to have the option to do it, but sometimes it's like, why would you do that? Because it's already there. Why would you do that? Cause that already, you know, the, the, all the flows seem to are built already. So it's, so yeah. So any ideas, if you guys have anything, shoot me an email. If you have like, okay. Hey, I wish it did this with Zapier because that's what I'm, I'm struggling on right now. I'm, I'm doing with Zapier right now and it's a hit and miss of taking FreshBooks invoices, putting them to a Google Drive exactly as Seth said. And then the Zap is every time something adds, it's forwarding it over to auto entry. Yeah. So that's because the client doesn't want to, the one thing I'd like to say, I mean, the OCR or the, it's awesome. It's coming through. One thing I am finding frustrating is that customers I have in, it's continually asking me the code or the category. And I'm just like, we've, we've put this category in and we've invoiced this client before. So I'd really like to see if there was um, some way in the customers that we could have it so that there's a rule there that whenever it sees, you know, David Leary US, we code that to, you know, US income or yeah, something like that's that. Not, the, the, the rules aren't sticking or applying. Like, no. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Can I um can I ask a question? Something about um I really liked uh when I figured this out was in the bank statement section. If you go in there, mm -hmm. the fast coding um for the bank statements. I thought that was really cool that that could fast code in. I thought I could do it on a credit card statement, but um I think it's just for the bank statements. And I didn't know if that was a feature that might come. Yeah. Uh, yes. I had the same experience myself. Okay. <laughs> like, I, yeah. So it is something that we're aware of teams aware of. It's on the list of things that need to be uh, changed a little bit, but you, you're correct. Cause I, I, cause I was using that. I was using the Divi card. I think I put, I think I put this out there on Twitter. I'm like Divi cards don't have integration with QuickBooks online. Yeah. And I'm like, Oh, I'll just do this. I'll, I'll dump out there. I'll, I'll get a statement out of there and I'll upload it to here. And, and then I got to here and then, I kind of fast code it. I was like, oh. so it's just like, yeah. Could you talk about fast code? Cause I don't think anyone knows. Yeah, I don't know what fast code is. Okay. Yeah. So fast code. So previously I think in most tools and you guys are used to is you have your bank statement, right? You take your bank statement and you scan it and then you get that dot QBO file, right? You kind of get it like a bank feed file. And then you have to take that file and then you have to shove it in, you know, put it in. Then when, then you do all your coding, right? in your transaction coding inside of the accounting system, right? So here you can actually do your quick coding here, right in your bank statement. And this is where I think she was asking uh, before about, um, hey, with bank statements, can we have rules and can we uh, have the categories automatically carry through? No, you can't do it in the accounts prep tool, but you can do that to bank statements here. And so with quick code, I gotta move my videos again, sorry. So. Okay, so with quick code, you can actually apply, code these to where you want them to go and then just do the check mark and you can publish these over. Now, I'm not going to click on any of these because this was a, more of an experiment of a bank statement I did and I don't really want these in my accounting system because I've already brought these through outside of a bank statement. And, but so you can, but that's the difference. Of, uh, you quick code them and then it sends these to QBO directly. It publishes them right to the bank account instead of doing a, like an export and then an import of a CSV or .qbo file. Does that make sense? 
It does. Uh, let me grab some questions here out of the yeah. chat. Um, Nancy says, for my practice, what would be most helpful would be setting this tool up for clients to use themselves. What are the advantages of them using this tool? I have someone, I have some who have receipts with tons of breakdown between cogs and supplies, and if they could use this to speed that data entry, it would make a huge difference. Thoughts? So you can put your clients on this. Um, we actually, in our partner uh, program, we actually have a, a way you can sign your clients up at a huge discount. Don't quote me on this, but I think it's 50% off for the, for the first six months. So, so any of those clients where you want them to just use auto entry in their, for their own internal accounting department, like you're not going to do it in house. You can set them up on, on auto entry. So you can, uh, you, you sign them up, you get them set up, but yeah, the, uh, you can break down line items to your customer jobs. You can break them down to classes, um, on those, but just to clarify that question a little bit, like, beyond like can the clients do it was there like a secondary question there um no i think that was the essence of it and then okay. sarah kind of followed up with i think essentially the same question she says can the client code themselves is there user access i can see clients wanting to use auto entry as a document storage system further down there's a question is there a storage limit uh there's no storage limits at all um we're actually kind of um one of the things we've recently added is we've added the ability to uh download bank statements with um we're uh, working with well, a couple of other integrations we have so yes we integrate with the accounting systems but then we have an integration with bill.com and we actually do bank fetching now so we do do uh to get those bank statements out we do do some bank fetching to get those those bank statements in so you're fetching and the statements not the transactions that's or, correct so yeah. so this is going to be yeah the, the physical paper or pdf of the statements right right yeah your transactions are going to be in your bank PBO. But in QBO, you're only going to get, or I meaning your bank feed, you're only going to get 90 days, right? Right. If you need to get your previous ones, it's a way to retrieve those. Um, and then uh, what about Canadian banks? Um, we, right now, because we're partnered with LedgerSync, so I don't know how many Canadian banks LedgerSync does or does not do. Oh, LedgerSync, huh? Did yes, LedgerSync is connected to a lot of Canadian banks. They've okay. been working with them for quite some time, so... Um, definitely should work with a lot of the Canadian banks, I would, I would assume, at least the ledger six side. Thank you, Matt. Um, so one thing in the U.S. side, so we just released this yesterday. Uh, we now have U.S. labeling. So before it was a little bit confusing because it would say purchases. And like this just said expenses um, instead of expense reports. And so sometimes, even myself, I made a mistake. I uploaded things to the wrong section because it's just, it takes your brain you know, if you're, especially if you're used to coming from that QuickBooks world in the U.S. side, it takes your brain a while to process like, oh, what, what equals what? And so now we've changed the, the vocabulary here to match the U.S. market and the, or North American market. So it should be a little bit easier. So your bills are going to be really your, your, any of your accounts payable and then any, any of your expenses, right? So anything to, or in checks, right? Or if you paid it by check, right? You can put the, the bill in here as well. And then FIGO this paid. Um, vendor statements is we're gonna, again, those statements are gonna reconcile against the bills. And then you have your sales invoices. Sales invoices is interesting because not every, you're probably not gonna use this with a lot of clients because they're probably, these clients are probably gonna create their invoices right inside of QuickBooks, right? Or Zero or Sage, right? But you definitely probably have those clients that maybe they're using some sort of proprietary software that because it needs to get those invoices printed out in a certain way. Uh, again, going to that use case of they're using Microsoft Word. They've been creating a year of invoices there. And now you need to get those invoices into the accounting system. And this is an easy way to do that. You can pass those through auto entry and then shove those into the accounting system. Big statements we've kind of talked about. And then expense reports is uh, interesting. So you probably have those clients that are just, um, they have employees, employees spend money, but maybe they're not big enough to really have a super deep expense report process. They don't need controls. They don't need an expensify or concur level expense report function. But once a year they travel to a conference and they need to track, the, they need to, the employees spend money. They need to file some expense reports. You need to reimburse them. So you can do that right through auto entry. So the employees could have the mobile app. On the mobile app, they take photos of receipts or on their business trip, they can submit that. And then what auto entry does, it'll actually create a bill in the accounting system for you to pay that employee, reimburse that employee or uh, that vendor, whoever it is you need to reimburse for those expense reports. And so it's just, it's uh, by renaming this expense reports, now you don't, you don't actually put your expenses here. 
you just it's really the expense reports that are have to be reimbursed for and you can capture credit your the corporate credit card receipts not necessarily reimbursements do you want to do the the the, the, the yeah the non uh corporate ones i i like to shove mine through the bill section my re that i so if i paid for with my debit card or my bank account or my corporate credit card i like to put those through my bill section um, I, if you want, the, it's, I think some people like that process of like having those all come in the individual expenses and creating a bill that can reconcile against all the individual expenses. Does that make sense? Like some people like that process of, Hey, I, I have a bill and every charge that's on that statement from that bill, it's shoved over So you could pass it through the expense reports if, if it's your company's credit card, the corporate mm -hmm. card, but I don't really like that. I like just to shove it in as an individual line item. Mm -hmm. right. And so See, to me, a bill is accrual. So the date of the bill rules for the reports, not when we write the check. Yeah. So would it be better to, if this said bills and expenses? Disbursements? Or bills and expenses? Or you would have, how about the bill just itself in its pure form is not a disbursement though. It's exactly yeah. the, it's exactly distinguished from a disbursement. Yeah. All right. Yeah, um, true. So, I mean, the way I look at that is I, if I have a bill and then a payment later applied to that bill, then accrual basis reports are going to give me the bill date. Cash basis reports will give me the payment date. And so I don't worry about that too much. Yeah. Um, um, also, David, yeah. we only have a few minutes left. And so before we run out of time, I wanted to shift gears and have you spend a few minutes talking about David Leary Consulting because I know some people were curious about that. I'm curious about that. I know that when you were with Intuit, is anytime I talked to any app developer who had any interest in getting into apps.com, I'd send them your way. Based on our more recent conversation, you said still send them my way, but it's a different model now because now you're on your own. So talk about that a little bit. I mean, like I'm kind of a, you know, starting my own business, right? And I'm in small business 101, like, like which is good, right? Because, uh, I'm, it's just giving me a different perspective, right? To work for a big company like Intuit all this time for, for those years, you know, I had a, a view of this world, right? I also had a little bit of an in theory world view of this, right? So I, um, I remember early, this is about two months ago, I purchased, I, I did a conference and I purchased some uh, promotional items and I paid for it with my debit card. It was the first transaction I ever did in my new company, right? It was very exciting. I paid for it with my debit card. The bill came in. I took the bill, I emailed it to auto entry, auto entry, uh, OCR the bill, shoved it into QuickBooks Online. QuickBooks Online automatically applied the, the, the payment to the bill. You matched it in the bank feed, automatically applied it. And I was like jumping up and down in my kitchen. I was like, this stuff really works. So I'm kind of uh, in the, I'm in definitely small business one-on-one where it's like, it's such a different perspective of this now, right? Of your uh, tolerance level, um, what your expectation of apps and data workflows are versus before I spent years talking about the theory, right? And now I'm moving my own real data into my own real company, right? And so that's kind of exciting. But what I've really kind of done is um, I really want to focus in uh, and work a lot with a lot of the niche apps. I mean, obviously many of you know that's my passion and a lot of the niche apps, um, they have their own, um, their own focus, right? Uh, maybe a brewery app, their focus is to only focus on, um, they're going to go to brewery conferences, right? They're never going to pop into Seth David's hangout and talk about the brewery app that they make, right? That's because I don't drink. It doesn't, well, it's, it's not so much that, it just doesn't make sense, right? They don't, they're going to go to a hangout where there's 40 people that own breweries, Right. And so we're on with those work with those apps like that. And to help those, those apps have a face to this audience kind of, it's kind of where I'm headed, but you know, one, one way to think about it is, you know, I'm trying to build an empire here. That's the easiest summary. Hey David, empire you are of David Leary. Here? What? Sorry. Somebody was saying something. Sorry about that. I was saying, um, I'd love to talk to you later about obviously helping apps. So you, I would definitely love to get your assistance and your input. So yeah open to it. Um, you can email me. So any auto entry stuff, you can email me at david.leary at autoentry.com. I'll just type that in the chat here. Yeah. And of course, when I send the follow-up email, I'll, I'll make sure I include all of David's contact details, um, including his home address, his bank account and routing number. It's all out there. Yeah. <laughs>
Got it. And so, you, yeah, so anything auto entry related there and you, um, any other emails you can uh, send to uh, Stumber, David at SombreroApps.com. You can get I it. love that name, Sombrero Apps. That's great. And I'm going to also post in the link to the partner program. So I lost the chat. Hold on. Oh, Sarah, I saw your comment. He, he, he covered that in the beginning. He was having trouble setting his background properly. That's why you have the green background. I think Seth doesn't give me the permission to change our background. So I, if I could, I would. I don't see the option. It's not, it's not in the app. You can do it on the website now. They moved it where that preference is at in your Zoom account. And well, then just it, it um, it. I figured it out. <laughs> you did? Where's that? <laughs> My question on pricing there, you've got the partner program, but is that also like I noticed when I went into sure. QuickBooks into the app section, it said it was 20% off. So is that what, you know, uh, pricing wise different? So it's, uh, it's, it's just like a bottle salad dressing. You go, you can order it online from their website for this price and you go to Walmart, it's this price. You get from Costco, it's a different price. It's just different markets are going to have the, uh, the, so right. the, the one in QBO is uh, available and that's just, you're, you're really not part of the, you're not an auto entry um, partner program. You're just okay. getting a disc as a your pro advisor. Here's a discount for you. It's kind of the way to think about that one that you can sign up your clients at a discount on. Um, but you're right. It's, it's a little different with the token model. It, it, it doesn't, it's not as straightforward or simple uh, to comprehend, right? Cause it's like, Oh, that app costs forty nine dollars. I'm going to get twenty percent off. I'm going to offer this to my client, and then you know, it's it's not I'm not kind of the same. So the one thing with the partner program, uh, if you sign up, this is really going to be for those clients that are going to use auto entry in their own. Uh, they have their own bookkeeping, internal bookkeeping department, right? They have their own accounting department. So those clients, you can get signed up on auto entry on your behalf, and as they use it, um, you actually get credits for your um firm so so if they, if, they, if they sign if they're you uh if you you put five clients on it or where they're running auto entry themselves right you're you're signing you're helping them get signed up at a discount you actually get credits um into your main auto entry account if that makes sense so one last question then okay. the i tried to find in my auto entry account you said you can do bank fetch through ledger sync i couldn't find that but what would the credit system or what would that be would that be three credits per statement fetched then or is that one per fetch and then three per processed or not it's that, or? so yeah i forgot the i just i couldn't find the link in there just i'm looking at the model I'm currently using for some and the cost for fetching versus going great. I can fetch here because I know ledger sync has more than some of the others that I'm the current model I'm using. I'm seeing in the chat 10 credits per connection. And then Aaron says 10 per fetch. I don't know if there's a difference between a fetch and a connection. Maybe we should call it a fetch. Yeah. Let me, let me follow up on that one. And then maybe Seth can get that in the email. Mm -hmm. um, Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure on the, the, the credits the fetch is using, if it's using any at all. But then once, once that bank statement page is back, it's, it's three credits to, to scan that bank statement. But I don't know on the, the actual fetching if that's using credit. Let me clarify, get an answer on that. And then yeah, I mean, I, I'll say this. When I spoke to the person who was at the booth at QuickBooks Connect, I'm sorry, I forgot her name. It was um, probably Jenny, yeah. Yeah, when she described the whole pricing model to me, it just felt like it was designed to be very fair. Like you wouldn't ever lose anything that you spent per se because of the way you're able to sort of allocate or reallocate where it's, where it's you know, take what's not used and use it somewhere where it's needed, you know. And I just, that was my overall impression of the pricing model because normally I don't like a token system like this. I feel like it's very not straightforward, but once she explained it to me, it made a lot of sense. I mean, it allows you because you can buy a bucket of tokens and if somebody only has three scans a month, you can, why shouldn't you not take advantage of that with auto entry, right? But if you didn't have a token model, you probably wouldn't, if somebody only has five or five scans a month, you probably would not sign them up for an app. You'd probably just manually type that in, right? So it allows you to just take advantage of these efficiencies and automation, you know, within that. Um, 
I feel like we have a trial version that we can play with. Uh, you can sign up for the, uh, yes, there's a trial. Um, and then even on the, uh, the lowest, lowest end account, it's 12 bucks a month for 50 tokens or 50 credits. So even on the low end, there's a very, very low end trial, but yes, you can sign up in your trial. And I think, I think you get 150 on the trial. Let me see. I'm actually right. trying to work on, um, some codes and maybe, maybe Seth, I don't know how, how soon you send this email out. But I'm actually okay. in the next 10 minutes. Oh, really? Out. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. Well, um, I, no, I'm tomorrow, trying usually to get... I try to send it out tomorrow. Okay. Um, I'm trying so to when get, I get the recording like a, up. I send the email out. I'm trying to get like a David Leary code, right? Like, hey, friend of David, okay, like, you've you typed that in, you can get a, a, an additional set of credits or a longer discount period. So I'm trying, to, I'm trying to get a code for people. So let me really push for that today. And then maybe this weekend, Seth might have a code he can give everybody, which <laughs> actually would be a better. It should be, what is it, Larry Later? Oh, no, no, no. Well, that, that won't be the code this time. I was on time for this. Oh, we, and Megan says that needs to apply to people already using it. They want to get the discount too. See what happens now? I know, I know. Now I you're know. in trouble. Now they're all going to cancel their accounts and start over again. We sign up. <laughs> well, but think we'll of all the business you brought in that way. It's a good thing. <laughs> yeah, it, a lot of new subscribers. But then you have churn. And then churn numbers don't actually always look good either. All right, so a couple promises. Uh, I want to try to find a discount code. Discount code, like a Leary VIP code or something like that. VIP. I want to find out about the fetching using credits. I want to find out... Um, All right, I made a note about second location. I didn't write enough because now I have no clue what the hell I wrote down. Why did I write down second location? Whose, idea, whose question was that? Megan, maybe. Wait, second what? Second location? Second, yeah, what is, did something autocorrect on my typing here? Sec, second, um, this is what client I'm location or coding? He said that's why you need a pen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I would have just banged it out quickly in OneNote because I've, I've divorced Evernote again and gone back to OneNote. I went back to my old note-taking wife or something like that. Oh, how about white labeling? If we're going to have clients doing this. of people who verify the OCR, that's what it was. They were in the box under your desk. Oh, yeah, yeah. Our, yes, yes, yes. Second location of human, ver human verification. Oh, so entry human verification. See, this is why I'm clarifying these things. Before I, I think you should go. use baby elephants to do the verification. I'm just saying. You know how much baby elephants eat, Seth? That is not even feasible. Really? <laughs> so, so <laughs> as far as white labeling, we kind of have a gray area on that. Um, if you're in the part of the partner program, we will help you. Um, we'll help you brand um, auto entry to your clients. And so all the, we'll provide you all the communications to those clients, everything you need to kind of roll it out and implement, including training, et cetera, to that client. But once they're in there, that part won't be white labeled once they're in the product. But all the, all the marking up to that point. Okay. Awesome. All right, we got to wrap up here. We've gone right. over time. I don't want to hold right. people hostage. People have bills to pay. Um, Maybe we try this again soon. So we, we'll uh, do we it go. again soon because there's a lot to go over here. I think there's just a lot to this, um, especially with the, the first section, you know, we spent like a half hour on that actually. Yeah, I didn't um, know it's going to generate so many questions. Yeah. Yeah. So, which is great, but, and there's definitely a lot of questions about what the advantages are of that over other quote unquote comparable solutions. I did air quotes. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> I, um, so uh, I, I think that would be a good conversation right there to have. Uh, and we can continue it in the between wall and main strategy forum right on Facebook. David's in the group. So post your follow-up questions there. Inundate the crap out of him so he can't get any work done. No, I'm Just kidding. tag me so I but, make sure I see that. Yeah, so, tag him okay. and uh, continue the conversation there. Next week, next Friday, we'll have another amazing topic uh, that hasn't been planned or scheduled yet, but it will be before this one goes up tomorrow. It, it might be me again. Actually, we're going to have our guest is going to be the Ayatollah of rock and roll, <laughs> aka Vendor Sync Rocks, aka Matthew Fulton. Um, nice. We're going to do something. We're going to do. We're going to show you how to auto code transactions quickly using Microsoft Excel. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs>
Actually, I was thinking we could show vendor sync if that's okay, but we could do Excel too. <laughs> so. If vendor sync is ready, we will show vendor sync because it's, it's awesome. We'll be on Gina's uh, show uh, this afternoon, actually. Okay, so. Gina's show this afternoon, two o'clock uh, Eastern or Pacific, five o'clock Eastern. Her group on Facebook is SBAA, Small Business Accounting Advisors. Just a request to join. She'll let you in, and then you'll be able to get the info for how to access her Hangout, or she does it on Zoom, too. Um, I think they talk privately for a half an hour, and then they go live after spending a half an hour discussing what they're going to discuss when they go live. Correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, Great people. There is there. Me, I'm off to my co-working space to work with Erica and figure out how we're going to conquer the world over the ne next week. Awesome. Thanks, everybody. Bye. We'll see you around soon. Bye. Thanks, guys. Let's save the chat one more time.